Today on our Gospel Truth broadcast, I'm going to discuss what makes Christianity different from all the religions of the world. You know, you have to be able to answer that question, and many people can't. So that's what we're talking about today. Stay tuned for the Gospel Truth. Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that emphasizes God's unconditional love and grace. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Monday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today I've got a brand new series that I'm starting, and I really believe that this is going to help you whether you are new to your faith in the Lord, whether you haven't even come to faith in the Lord. Maybe you're just watching this program, kind of checking things out. Or if you've been born again for a very long period of time, we're going to be talking about just some of the foundational truths about what is a Christian. What makes a Christian different than any other religion of the earth? And some of you that have possibly been born again for a while may think, well, that's too elementary for me. But, you know, I found out that most Christians don't understand the foundational truths. They really don't have a good grasp on these things. And that's the reason that Satan is able to come and steal the word from them. Let me use this passage of Scripture over in Matthew chapter 13. And this is where Jesus gave a parable about the sower sowing the seed. And he was talking about that there were four different types of people's hearts, the way they receive the word. And depending on how they receive the word depends on whether the word really produces the right results. Talking about victory, whether you experience God's best. And in the process of describing this, he said in Matthew chapter 13 and verse 18, he said, Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. Now I'm not going to go into teaching on all of this parable right now, but the point I was wanting to make in verse 19 is, it talked about four different types of people. The only type of person that Satan had access to to just steal the word from them and keep it from producing its results was the one described right here. And it says that when they understand not the word of God. If you don't have understanding of the word of God, then the word of God is going to be easily stolen from you. Satan preys on ignorance. You know, there's a saying in the world that says, whatever, you, you know, what you don't know won't hurt you. But that really isn't true. It's just the opposite. What you don't know is killing you. And so we're going to go through just some of the foundational truths about salvation, about relationship with God, what it's all about. And I can promise you, some of the things we're going to be sharing, they are very elementary, but at the same time, I believe it has tremendous potential to open up your heart and bless you. And, you know, we've got this... Uh, tape set right here that we give out to every person who gets born again at our meetings. It's entitled The New You, and it has two tapes or CDs in it. One is entitled What is a Christian, and the second one is entitled What's Next. And along in there is this little uh, card right here that says the uh, scriptures are the teaching sets that I have that I believe are foundational to get a person started. So we give these people who get born again either this new album right here or we just had this come out in book form too. And we now have this available in book form, in print. And I believe that this is just a tremendous tool to get a person jump started and going in their relationship with God. And not only that, but it lists in order the teachings I have that I believe would be beneficial for a person to start learning these truths. And so, you know, I've got over 400 different tapes available. I've got books, videos, DVDs, all kinds of ways of ministering to people. And sometimes people are at a little bit of a loss about uh, they, they've made a commitment to the Lord, but they don't know where to start. And so basically, this is a starter kit. This is how you get started, just dealing with foundational truths. And now to have it out in this book form, I believe it'll not only be good for you, but this will also be a great tool for you to take and share with somebody who's possibly interested in their relationship with the Lord, and they don't know exactly how to get started. And the very first teaching, what we're going to begin on this week, is talking about what is a Christian. And there's a lot of confusion about what a Christian is even among people who claim to be Christians. 
Let me just say this right up front, that not every group that represents themselves as being Christian is really presenting the true gospel message. And I think that there's, uh, excuse me, many ways that I could prove that, that I could uh, reveal that. But just real quickly, the simplest way, I believe, is if you would just look around. The word Christian means little Christ. And it was originally used as a derogatory term applied to the followers of Jesus because they were so much like Christ that they, they said, well, you're just like a little Christ. You are acting like Christ. You are doing all of these things. Do you know what? If there's a lot of people who are claimed to be Christians today and were arrested for being a Christian, there wouldn't be enough evidence to convict them. I mean, they aren't Christ-like. They don't have that power. You go into some churches who claim to be Christians, and I guarantee you all they've got is just a different doctrine than somebody else, but there is zero, zippo, zilch, not a evidence of it in their life. And I really believe that we need to go back and analyze what it is to truly be a Christian and make sure that your faith is truly in the Lord because there's a lot of churches today that you can go and you sign a card and you become a member of their church and they say that you're a Christian because you go to a Christian church. You know, I believe that if you're a Christian, you should go to a church, not just any church, but find you a good church. I agree with that. But going to church doesn't make you a Christian any more than sitting in a garage would make you a car. If you're a car, you ought to get in a garage for your own protection. If you're a Christian, you ought to go to church for your own protection and edification. But going to church won't make you a Christian any more than sitting in a garage will make you a car. There are lots of people today who claim to be Christians and are not truly born again. And I can't just look at you and... You know, it's not up to me. I am not the judge, and so I can't just sit here and say this one is a Christian and this one isn't. But I can expose things, misconceptions about Christianity based on what the Word of God says, and we can define this. And I believe that there's a lot of people today in churches who are trusting that because they're trying to do as well as they can. They're trying to be a good person. They go, do to go to church. There's some people that because they pay their tithes, or because they were baptized as they were, or as, uh, when they were an infant and things like this. They trust on that in their salvation, and they believe that God is going to save them based on that. You know, as I was uh, uh, just last night, just I glimpsed this on television, and they were showing something about somebody uh, asking about, do they need to be baptized? Did their baby need to be baptized? And the person was saying, well, sure. And they said, well, what's the point of baptism? And it says it enters you into heaven. It gives you entrance into heaven. You wash your sins away through baptism. That is not what the Word of God says. If you were baptized as an infant and if you're trusting in that, that is not true salvation. If you were baptized as an adult and trusted in your baptism, water baptism, that is not true salvation. If you are joining a church or going to church and trusting that because of that God is going to accept you into heaven, then that is not true salvation. If you are trusting that because you're a relatively good person you're going to heaven, that is not true salvation. That isn't what the Bible teaches, and yet that is what the majority of people believe. You know, I've seen some of these surveys where they do questions and ask just Joe Blow person out on the street, what do you think um, constitutes salvation? What do you have to do to be right with God? And the majority of the American public, of course, this program is being heard all around the world, but in my travels to other nations and stuff, I found out that this is not limited to the United States. This is uh, typical of every place. The average person, the majority of people, believe that just being a good person is enough, that if you are good, if you're better than the average, if you don't, you know, do certain things, then God is going to accept you based on that. That is not what the Word of God teaches. That is not true salvation. I also saw a television program one time where a minister went out on the street. He had a microphone, and he was asking people questions. And I remember these two girls, they were teenage girls, and he came up to them and he says, Do you believe in heaven and hell? And they said, well, yes, we do. And he, and he asked them, he says, are you going to heaven or are you going to hell? And they said, well, we believe we're going to heaven. And he says, why are you going to heaven? And they said, because we're pretty good people. We're relatively good people. 
And he says, well, so you think that you're going to be accepted by God because you're a good person? And they said, yes. And he says, well, let me ask you this. Have you ever lied? And both of them laughed and looked at each other and says, well, sure, we've lied. And then he quoted the scripture to him that all liars will have their part in the lake of fire. And he says, have you ever lusted after a boy? And he read the scripture about how Jesus said that if you look at a person and lust after him in your heart, it's as if you've already done it. And they both laughed and they said, well, yeah, we've done that. And he just went through and began to name a number of sins and show that if you do these things, that you are going to have your part in the lake of fire. And within just a minute or two, these two girls who were kind of laughing and thought that this whole thing was funny and thinking, well, sure, we're going to be accepted because we're relatively good people. Within just a couple of minutes, they realized that, you know what, they weren't that good. All of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God is what it says in Romans 3.23. And any person who is believing that they are going to be accepted by God because of your performance is going to be sadly mistaken and it could cost you your eternal destiny because all of sin and come short of the glory of God. God doesn't grade on a curve. God doesn't just take the best people and even though nobody's perfect, He's got to accept somebody, and so if you're better than another person, he will accept you. That's not what the Word of God teaches. The Word of God teaches that you either have to be perfect, sinless, have zero problems in your life, never having done anything if you are going to be accepted with God based on your performance, or since nobody can do that, you have to accept a Savior. You have to receive Jesus as your personal Savior, and then you get accepted by God based on whether or not you have put personal faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Big difference. So that's what we're beginning to talk about. We're going to take a break right here, and our announcer is going to share with you about this new book that we've got out about this product. I really encourage you to take advantage of it. If not for yourself, certainly every one of you knows somebody that needs these things clarified. So please take advantage of it. Listen to our announcer, and I'll be right back after this break. Andrew's complete teaching titled, The New You, is available in a two-part album on tape, CD, or DVD for a gift of seven pounds or more. Or you can request this teaching in book form for a gift of three pounds or more. The first audio tape or CD in this album is available for a gift of three pounds or more. But for those unable to give, Andrew and his partners will provide this first teaching free of charge. Our address is AWME. That's Andrew Womack Ministries of Europe, P.O. Box 4392, Walsall, WS1, 9AR, England. Our telephone number is 01922-473-300, and website orders can be placed at www.awme.net. We hope to hear from you today. And now, Gospel Truth continues. So we're beginning to talk about what is salvation? What is being a Christian? And I tell you, even though most people think, oh, well, I know that, most people, I don't believe, truly understand this. There's a lot of misconception. And it's just my opinion. I don't have a way of proving this. But I wouldn't be surprised if there aren't a huge number of people who call themselves Christians, who lived a relatively moral life, who went to church, and yet they are going to split hell wide open because being a Christian is not about just living a holy life. You know, if it was just you be good and don't do this and don't do that and you live a holy moral life and that makes you accepted with God, if that's what salvation was, hold on to your seat here because this is going to shock some of you, but if that's what salvation was, then many of the other religions of the world would have a leg up on Christianity. That means that God would be accepting them because, you know, if you go into some of these Arab countries, the real strict Arab countries, they have a code of modesty that I guarantee you makes America look terrible in comparison. Matter of fact, you'll find out that they won't allow most American television and movies and stuff into these Arab countries because of the lewdness and the sexual content to it. And I believe that they're correct. Their standard of holiness in those areas is better than ours. If you go into some of these countries and if you steal, do you know what they do? They cut off the hand that steals. And because of that, in some of these countries, you can actually go to places where they don't lock their doors. 
They, they are, it's safe to walk the streets at night, and the reason is because they are so harsh in their punishment and things like this that their standard of conduct, their level of morality is better than some of the quote-unquote Christian nations. You go to some of the Buddhist and the Hindu, and these people are so religious, so zealous. I remember the very first time I ever traveled to India, I saw people, I saw a little kid crumpling up rose petals in his hands like this and feeding ants because he was worshiping them. They could have been ancestors. I saw people that took whips and beat themselves with whips and did all of these things. There's people that are much more zealous than what you are in their approach towards God. And yet, I'm going to say some things here that will offend people, but it's the truth, and the truth is intended to set you free if you'll receive it. But the truth is that there are people who are zealous that are beating themselves with whips, that are shaving their heads, taking oath of poverty, putting on saffron robes, begging, humbling themselves. They're doing all of these religious calisthenics, and they are going to split hell wide open. And I know some people are offended at that, saying, well, how dare you do that? These are good people. These are people. Well, see, here's the point, that true Christianity isn't about your goodness. The truth is that even though you may try and be as good as you possibly can, Romans chapter 3, verse 23 says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Nobody, nobody, I don't care what religion it is, I don't care what place in the world you live, I don't care if you cut people's hands off if they steal, if you make them wear, if you make the women wear these robes and veils so that all you can see is their eyes, I can guarantee you in their heart, all men and all women have sinned and come short of the glory of God. If they haven't committed it with their physical actions, they've committed it in their heart, is what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5. If you lust in your heart, it's as if you've already committed it. If you hate it in your heart, it's as if you've already done the action of murder. Nobody, nobody, nobody can ever stand before God and deserve salvation. Salvation isn't something to be earned. It's a gift to be received. And this really, I'm just setting the stage right now, but this is what really sets Christianity apart from every other religion on the face of the earth. I don't know if you've sat down and thought about this, but every religion believes in a supreme being. Some believe in more than one, but the majority, the dominant world religions, most of them believe in one God and they believe that there is a heaven, and they may call it something else to be gained, and a hell to shun. So they believe some of the basic things, but the things that sets Christianity apart from all the other religions of the world is we are the only religion, if you want to use that term, that has a Savior. There is no other religion. You can look to Buddhism, Hare Krishna, Hare Lam, Taoism. You could look at any religion, Islam, Every religion on the face of the earth except true Christianity places the burden of salvation upon you. It's all based on how holy you can be. You've got to live up to a standard. And if you're in an Arab country, it may be this standard of holiness. If you're in a Buddhist country, it may be this. And they all have their different standards, but it's all the same thing. Basically, you, here's all of these rules that you must do and you live as holy as you possibly can and hope that you can enter into heaven. Now, sad to say, there is a branch of Christianity, not true Christianity, but uh, false Christianity, what I call religion. Religion, to me, doesn't matter if it's talking about any of these other religions. It's just religion is a term that describes man's thoughts about God man trying to approach unto God based on their own effort and based on their own wisdom. True Christianity isn't us approaching unto God. True Christianity is God coming to us and saving us and doing for us what we could not do. And see, all the other religions 
put the burden of salvation upon the back of the individual. You have to do this and this and this. And there are some segments that call themselves Christians that basically teach the same thing, that preach unless you live holy, unless you go to church, pay your tithes, unless you join this church, unless you are baptized in a certain way, unless you do this religious ritual, then you can't be saved. All of that is false. All of that is wrong. It doesn't matter if you call it Islam, if you call it Buddhism, if you call it any religion on the face of the earth, or if you call it Christianity. If the message is you have to do this, and then based on how well you perform, then God will either accept you or reject you based on your actions. That is wrong, 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 wrong. And the reason that Christianity is set apart from all other religions on the face of the earth is that we are the only religion that has a Savior. In other words, God saw that no person could overcome this sinful nature that we had. We might restrict it to a degree and live holier than somebody else, but who wants to be the best sinner that ever went to hell? The truth is, all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every person that has ever breathed on the face of the earth deserves hell because we have sinned and transgressed God. We have done selfish things. We have rebelled. We've hurt other people. We've hurt ourselves. Every person that has ever lived on the face of the earth deserves to go to hell. And we can't save ourselves. This is the great deception in people in other religions, and again, even in Christianity, and then even people who aren't religious, they have this concept that if they will just be a relatively moral person, certainly God is going to accept them. But no, that's not what the Word of God teaches. Jesus came to this earth. He lived totally for us. Jesus never sinned. Jesus never violated a single law of God. Jesus lived perfect, and He deserved salvation. He deserved relationship with God based on His own goodness. He's the only person that's ever walked on the face of the earth that ever lived a sinless life. And then, not only did He deserve that Himself, but then He offered Himself as a substitute. And because He was God, and I'll explain this more as we go into this. It's very critical that you understand that Jesus wasn't just a man, but Jesus was God. And because he was God manifest in a physical body, when he offered himself as a substitute for us and took our sin, and God the Father placed all of the sin of the human race upon Jesus, and that sin entered into him. And when he suffered for our sins then he not only deserved a perfect relationship with his father because he lived it and he earned it and he deserved it, but then he took all of that holiness and submitted it and allowed our sin to come upon him. He took our sin and gave us his holiness. And it was the great exchange. He took the sin of the whole human race upon himself. He suffered our punishment so that God would never have to punish us, so that you would never have to go to hell. And as he took your sin, he gave you his righteousness. Now, all of this is available, but it is totally dependent upon us humbling ourselves, admitting that we can't save ourselves and that we need a Savior, and putting faith in a Savior. This is what makes true Christianity different than all the other religions. We have a Savior. When I stand before God, it's not going to be, God, I did this, and I did this, and I lived holy, and I was better than this person over there. Nope, it's going to be, Father, I stand here, and the reason I trust that you are going to receive me is because Jesus became my Savior. Jesus bore my sins. Jesus suffered my punishment, and in return... He gave me right standing with you as a gift. It says in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, it says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. You deserve death. I deserved death. But God doesn't give you what you deserve if you will receive this gift of eternal life. But if you think that you're earning it, if you are shaking your fist in the face of God and saying, you owe it to me, I'm living holy, now you do this, I must be accepted, then you get rejected because you don't have a Savior. You either have a Savior and are accepted with God through what He has done, or 
you have to stand there on the basis of what you've done, and all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You don't want that. You know, I've got a lot more to share on this, and we're going to continue this on our program tomorrow, so I encourage you to join me. And also listen as our announcer gives you some information about these materials and this brand new book that we have out entitled The New You. It would be a blessing. So listen and call or write today. Andrew's complete teaching titled The New You is available in a two-part album on tape, CD, or DVD for a gift of seven pounds or more. Or you can request this teaching in book form for a gift of three pounds or more. The first audio tape or CD in this album is available for a gift of three pounds or more. But for those unable to give, Andrew and his partners will provide this first teaching free of charge. Our address is AWME. That's Andrew Womack Ministries of Europe, P.O. Box 4392, Walsall, WS1, 9AR, England. Our telephone number is 01922 473 300, and website orders can be placed at www.awme.net. We hope to hear from you today. You know, I felt as I was ministering today that many of you just really saw some things clearly that the Holy Spirit spoke to you. There may be some of you that realized you have just acknowledged that there is a God, but you haven't really made Jesus your Savior. Your faith hasn't been in Him, but your faith has been in yourself and in your goodness. Today, you need to humble yourself. Today, you need to make Jesus your Lord. And we have available to you people right now, wherever you are, that could take your call that uh, could not only give you the materials we're offering, but they could also pray with you. And this could be your day to confess publicly that Jesus is your Savior. So please call that number that you see on your screen. I believe that this would be a real help to you. We also would like to point out Andrew's upcoming speaking schedule. All meetings are open to the public and no registration is required for these events. Visit our website or call our helpline for more information. Mark your calendar and come meet Andrew at one of these events. I'd like to give a special invitation to all of our full-time ministers watching this program to come join me on November the 5th through the 7th. In England, we're going to be holding a minister's conference with Pastor Bob Yandian. Charlie and Jill LeBlanc will be doing praise and worship along with my wife. It's going to be in Buxton. This is in Derbyshire, England at the Paramount Palace Hotel November the 5th through the 7th in Derbyshire, England. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for more gospel truth. I'm going to be accepted with God because of what Jesus did for me, not because of what I have done for Jesus. My faith is in a Savior. And my point is that if I have lived holier than you have, and yet I had to have a Savior, then I can guarantee you, you have to have a Savior. Every last one of us have to have a Savior. And this is what all of the other religions of the world miss. They do not have a Savior. In every other religion, they acknowledge a God, they acknowledge a heaven and a hell, but it's all based on your performance. If you will shave your head, put on a saffron robe, shake a cup, take an oath of poverty, if you will deny yourself, if you will have a jihad and kill the infidels, it's all based on what you do. But you know what, Christianity, it's not based on what you do. It's based on what was done for you as a love gift, and it's just a matter of will you accept it? Will you receive it? That's tomorrow on Gospel Truth 